So what'd you think of the game last night? I still can't believe Armstrong ran the field from the Tuesday zone. Um, yeah. Armstrong's really something. Nearly took a fella's head clean off with a toss ball stick. Yeah, well, he's a hacker. That's what they do. Rangers don't show a shred of mercy in a Darlings game. Bates got tossed out of the game for excessive sportsmanlike conduct in the third half. <laughs> Serves him right. Y yeah. Um, Felix, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what a Tuesday zone is. I don't know my tenders from my forwards. Thing is, I just don't understand toss ball. Hey, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'll teach you all there is to know. Uh, great. That's just swell. Can't wait. If you'll just listen... No. No more listening. No more preaching. We are losing people left and right. We need to act. Enough, Zora. I'm not putting the torch to innocent people. Do you want to bring the board's cruisers and gunships down on us? Captain, apologies, but our situation grows dire. Our people talk of foolish endeavors. What news do you bring? They are armed all the same. All they need is a good reason, and war is one such reason. Excellent. Did you find the Vanois? Thank the Eternal. We're one step closer to bringing the truth to every man, woman, and child in Halcyon. For now, you can tell Hiram that I'll stop using Devil's Peak. From the pits of our eternal souls. Thank you, Captain. I have much to do. Articles to write, sermons to ponder. We live in such an exciting time. Let's talk later. Hey, I need to see each of the wounded, but drop by the clinic when you can. I want a word. Hey, Captain. I need your help, and we ought to keep it hush-hush. You know about what happened here, right? The history of Amber Heights? Fella came through Edgewater once, mentioned something to my dad about pirates wiping out of town. You mean this is the same place? Right. Common belief is that the pirates fled to an old relay station that had already been abandoned, but nobody could find them. The station's locked up, but one of my people found an old data cartridge in a nearby wrapped nest. It's mostly corrupted, but I pulled a couple codes off of it. One is the code to the Amber Heights gate. I don't recognize the other, but it's similar. I bet it opens a door. I know it's a long shot, but if we miss something there, if you can get into that station, maybe we can get some answers. Just a warning. The area is infested with mantisaurs. I'd send some help, but we're, you know, preparing for war. Appreciate it. Here's the code. If it works, bring back anything you find. Supplies are best, but information's good, too. If someone was behind the Amber Heights massacre, they'd give a lot of people around here some closure to find out who and string them up. Good luck. Watch out for the Taros. Let me guess. That gate that opens... Oh, I'm in Amber Heights. I can do that. Let me go find this person. And then when I go back to Star Bay to talk to Sanjar. Hey, fella. Looks like I'm not the only new face around here. What do I call you, stranger? Welcome to Amber Heights, Captain. Call me Tucker. You here to join the Iconoclasts? Help us free this world? I am not a little boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? I'd hope she'd accept my decision. According to her, stepping foot outside of the house in broad daylight is too dangerous. My entire life she crammed a fear of danger down my throat. 
Don't go play with friends. Mantasaurs will tear your arms off. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. Marauders can violate you. You'd fall in a sulfur pool. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees me as a little boy in need of her protection. I won't stand for it, I tell you. She doesn't want to see me as anything other than her baby boy. Why would I go back again? What'll be different this time? <sighs> You're right. I can do this. I just need to stand my ground and make her see she can't control me anymore. No one can. Well, I did it. And then my voice cracked. And then I shot myself in the face. Okay, where is this door? I think I know where it is. No, it's not. I thought, you know what, it might be. I was thinking it would be the lab. To the one where I got the gloop gun, which honestly, let me tell you, really cool, but kind of underpowered in my opinion. It's a science weapon. If you upgrade it, it should be like better. You know, they should fly higher, fly longer, or you know, just anywhere. Or maybe they should take fall damage. I don't. Th I don't know if enemies in this game even take fall damage. I know, I do, and I know that friends, my uh, companions do. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, the rest of the game does. If we get DLC, I wonder if it's either gonna be a gun DLC or a story DLC. Attack, bitch. Want some of this? You got it, Captain. You else? Oh, hey, look, a flying squirrel. <laughs> It'll work, you just gotta shoot him enough. Saying. We all in one piece.
impressive. Ooh, look at all these bits. Ooh, special eye patch. I didn't even see that. So here's the thing about Tossball. Tossball is played from the heart. Okay, I'm with you so far. Play from the heart. Easy. There are other schools of thought. Some say you gotta use your head to play Tossball. Those people have concussions. Oh, gosh. That sounds, um, really dangerous. Good at this. Tossball's a celebration of danger. Take the hacker. The hacker's job is to trample right through the enemy's defense. Best hacker in the league's fella by the name of Take It Easy Tatum. 59 injuries to his name in three non-consecutive seasons. Why do they call him Take It Easy Tatum? Oh, that's what the mediators used to shout out every time he'd go into a bloodthirsty frenzy. Huh. Welcome back. You find anything out there? Let's see. These are old. Looks like correspondences between the pirates. Some bits here, some there, some... Wait. This... This one's got the Amber Heights gate code on it. Just like the one I found earlier. And here's... The letter. Wait, this is from Graham. Oh, of all the... Captain. He gave them the gate codes. Yeah. He did. It really did. I know he's got his head in the clouds, but I always believed there was a core of good there. What the hell happened to live and let live? I always figured Mr. Bryant for a man of character. In the end, though, he was just another name on a long list of frauds. Yeah. He had us all fooled. Now I've got to sort out how to break it to the rest of my people. Thank you for bringing this back, but I need some time. I gotta think. I'll let you know if I figure something out. Hey, you got a minute? Sure. I can't believe I wanted to shake his hand. I need a shower. It makes you wonder if being a treacherous, two-timing coward is some sort of contagious disease, or if he was just born that way. At first, I liked what Graham was doing. The iconoclasts were gonna change Halcyon for the better. But then, we found out Graham was behind the slaughter of Amber Heights. How can anybody so morally bankrupt lead a movement to transform the colony? Yeah, maybe you're right. You'd never do something like that, would you? Slaughter a whole community of innocents? Is there a right answer to this? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's get back to it. I need to put all this ugly business with Graham behind me. Oh, there she is. Go take a walk, Captain. I'll find you once my head's on straight. Cool, alright. Well, that's good. I hope I don't have to come to you. All right, and now we can go talk to Sanjar. Which will be a heck of a blast. So Graham caused the slaughter of Amber Heights. That's what I know. Yep.
Did you know June Lei, grown up? Miss Tennyson? Nah, she never looked my way. I knew of her, though. Who didn't? She was just about the busiest woman on the Groundbreaker. What did folks say about her, then? Tough. Competent. Had a glare that'd stop you dead in your tracks. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Be careful with your new friends in Amber Heights. They're not the most reliable types. Anyway, what can I do for you? You're just as rigid as the old executive committee. Why, we've hardly been able to get a clear message out until recently. When Graham finally shut up. It isn't easy keeping a town like Stellar Bay afloat, especially without the board's backing. We need that frequency to reach our trading partners. Indeed. That's why it's imperative that MSI be reinstated onto the board. And the first step is getting the Bolt 52. You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. I didn't mean for any harm to come to you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Oh, one of the executives required a transplant. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. Apparently not. In charge of a scrap heap of a city. Abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. What a question! Bureaucratic micromanagement is the only way anything gets done in Halcyon, and proper documentation is a key part of that. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Uh, I just looked away from my TV for a second. I have no idea what the fuck he just said. Wait, we're dropping a bomb on the, on board? the board? Sort of. Sort of. Really, really, we're, we're just, just going to blackmail, blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. That's what I like to hear. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch, illegally and in secret. Is it really illegal if the board's the one that makes the rules in the first place? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. Do you really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Already? <laughs> if only the rest of the colony operated as efficiently as you. Imagine what a different state we'd be in, hmm? I'll complete the Bolt 52 in no time. I dare say it'll be my second greatest achievement after the reformations. You're getting ahead of yourself again. So I am. Do you have this cartridge? Oh, did I say I had a data cartridge? That's just what I call my left nut. That seems unnecessarily complicated. It's actually very funny, sir. Now I'm confused. Do you have evidence against UDL or not? I do. I knew there was something going on. 
This is exactly the proof we need. The board will have to welcome us back now. I'll transmit this data along with the completed Bolt 52 right away. After that, we'll sit back and quietly wait for the board to respond. That means no more broadcasts from us. Nice. Thank you, again, for retrieving the bolt. It's every bit as complex as I'd heard, but I'm up to the challenge. Anyway, what can I do for you? Now what? Oh, I go back inside the station and I talk to the broker. I isn't there? I wonder if yeah, there is. There yeah, don't mind my rambling. There's a meeting that we have to go to, and you have to either side with the iconoclast or Sanjar. And I know how to get both of them to like each other again and work together, and that's the best monarch that there could be. Shut up. Do you hear that? It's the blessed sound of radio silence, which leads me to believe you have sweet, sweet news for me. Yes, indeed. I am back in business. But before we get down to it, might I ask how you handled the problem in the end? You don't want to know the details. Blood everywhere, bodies all over the place. Ugliest job we ever done. Hmm, is that so? No, Felix is just a retard. I don't know how. The two are diametrically opposed and impossible to please. But it matters not how you fix my problem, only that you did. I don't doubt that you are working with Phineas, but my contract specifies I relay any acquired information to the purchaser, and to the purchaser alone. However, to send the data, I will need your assistance in cycling the antenna's receiver so I can input the needed adjustments. You make it sound so scandalous. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. It's simple, truly. I merely need you to waltz outside and throw the lever to cycle the power. I'll key in the numerical adjustments from in here. Terrific. I'll be here. Waiting with bated breath. Give a shout if the panel electrocutes you. Okay, where's the tower? Let me guess, it's somewhere in a place that is bad. And I have to kill 10,000 monsters in order to get there. I bet I do. That wouldn't be fun. I would not like that. I wonder if we're going to get a toss ball DLC. Oh, here. I may have 
the tiniest iota of a prickly exterior. But I must admit, I have grown rather fond of you. Take care out there. Captain! Big flaming thingy! Yeah, I did. Looks like a UDL ship. Based on the gunnery attachments, I guess it's one of the board's blockade enforcers, but don't cite me on that. Oh well, a pity for the crew, but I can't see how it affects me. Hiram? Can you hear me? Did you see that? Architect saved me from swindlers and fools. Sanjar, what are you bloody doing on my channel? Did MSI or did MSI not cease broadcasting? Yes. Are you there? Yay, it's a reunion. <laughs> Not without a physical contact waiver. Ah, the good captain. The truth brings us together once more. Our salvation has come crashing through the stratosphere. We need only collect its weapons. Are you mad? That's a UDL gunship. You'd probably shoot your own toes off. Ah, I see you learn nothing while dealing with these buffoons. We could use the gunship's armaments to defend Stellar Bay, but we need its targeting module. Our message is so close to breaking free of this planet and spreading to the stars. Help us secure that module and we will save our colony. Listen, I don't care a single whit what you do so long as you leave me out of it. Which means, get off my void damn channel! I'm more than finished with you lot. I'm gonna give that to... So well, let's see. I'm gonna be honest with you, um, there is no need to give it to, um, Graham. Unlike Edgewater and the Titanical Gardens, there is no two ways that this could go. Um, basically, I would give it to Stellar Bay because Graham did kill people. And because you can actually bring them together in the first place. There is no one, two, three ways that this would go. I'm going for an ending. I'm going for both endings, actually. Just... To show you them, because I did the same thing with Fallout New Vegas, but... You ever seen a real live Saltuna? What do you mean live? Saltuna comes in cans? Felix, Saltuna is a kind of fish. Lives in the ocean. You knew that, right? Are you serious? You tell me there's a fish made entirely out of Saltuna? I hope Edgewater don't end up like this. Jeez. Eyes up, boss. We're rambling into the jaws of danger. Uh, God, I hope it's not you because you are the you have an IQ of a you fucking sure we frog. Go this way, Captain? We went this way before. Oh, but well, you weren't there. Yes, you were there. Never mind. I'm just gonna run past everything. Excuse me. Here they come. Nope, running past everything. Nope, not. Don't even need to worry about it. Nope. Excuse me. Ah, you fuckers, come with me. I'm on my way. There's really no need to fight. It's, up, boss. If it's not a marauder, I'm not killing it. Just run past it. Run past it. There it is. Well, I'm in combat. One down. Get it off. Get it off.
Felix, help me. I said help me. <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, shit. He actually did something. I have a 25% chance to revive a companion when I use that. Powered entirely from hate. Let the pawns go first, as Magneto said in The Last Stand. I love that movie, by the way. I, I, I'm re-watching that, because I love that movie. Any X-Men with Hugh Jackman in it, I'll watch. I'll also watch, uh, what is it, the first, first something? First Class. I'll watch that. Phoenix was alright. I never saw Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. Why am I talking about X-Men? Dude, they need an X-Men game. I used to play a game on the Wii. It was an X-Men game. I really want to play that again. I don't remember what it was called. But they, they don't have any good Marvel games on the Xbox. At least I don't have to fight anybody on this ship. But I love The Outer World is actually doing cutscenes in this game. Like, that was the cool cutscene. Interesting. And then we take this to uh, Sanjar. Because, honestly, I don't trust Graham. And I think he dies. And I think I'm going to kill him. That might be a thing. And then, while I'm here, we can talk to Agnes. Hello. Oh, Captain, you did it! My little boy is back safe and sound! Tell the Captain how grateful we are, Tuck Tuck. Mama, I told you that I'm not staying. I just came back to talk to you about why I left. Then I'm going back to Amber Heights. 
Oh, we'll get that silliness sorted out. You're safe here with me, and that's how it's going to stay. Isn't that right? What a sour thing to say. My little boy will always need me. I'm his mama, you know. Mama, what I need is for you to listen to what I want for once. But that's between us. Now you promised the captain a reward, so settle up. Then you and me are gonna have a long talk. Here, kind stranger. This is every bit I've scrimped and scraped for years to save. But it's more than worth it to have my Tuk Tuk home safe again. Good luck, fucker. They're real pretty. And they got these really big teeth, if you see them up close. I heard they spit acid right in your eyes. You saw one of them up close? I, I mean, yeah. They're just about everywhere in Edgewater. Can't hardly turn a corner without slipping in their entrails. Wait. Are we talking about the same thing? You're not talking about Saltuna? If the Iconoclasts reach that ship first, there won't be any chance for a peaceful monarch. I don't suppose you've found the targeting module yet. I've sent patrols, but they're running into trouble with the Iconoclasts. They're all mad! And what's more, they left us! I don't see any way for us to work together. Ugh, not this again. Remember what we practiced, sir. Yes. The words in those reviews were very hurtful, but they do not define me. I am a mantipiller, and my will is my cocoon. I can emerge and become whatever I wish. Nice. You too? He has a point, sir. And it's not all bad. Supposing you're right, who exactly would you have me work with? The Iconoclasts are not the most compromising sorts. That's an interesting suggestion. I confess I don't know much about her except that she worked for Rizzo. I'd be willing to consider it. But I need to see her review first. Very well. I can't promise anything, but let's see what we have here. Well, it seems like she, uh, she's actually very qualified. I wasn't expecting to say this, but if you can put her in charge and convince her to agree to a meeting, I'd be willing to discuss terms. Fun. I will do that. Is it? God damn, I, I'm sick of this fucking planet. Here's the other thing about Tossball. Tossball is all about scoring goals. Hmm. Scoring goals, got it. And you can score a goal by kicking the ball, throwing the ball, or, uh... Or running it into the Saturday goal, if you're a visitor. Or the Sunday goal, if you're on the home team. Okay, so if you're on the home team, you want to run the ball into the Sunday goal? Makes, uh, perfect sense. Yeah. You can also kick it, that's called a foot goal. Or throw it, that's called a hand goal. Running's worth more points, but it's got some risks. You could get cleaved, hacked, winged, bronzed. You could tumble the ball in the Wednesday zone. Also known as getting humped. Felix, are we still talking about toss ball or...? Uh, well, yeah. What'd you think we were talking about? Felix, I love you, but you're a fucking idiot. Graham's got the right idea, but he isn't the right guy to execute it. I don't even think he's motivated by philosophism anymore. I think he's just guilt-ridden. I can't believe I'm even saying this, but I keep going over and over it in my head. And the only way I see the Iconoclast surviving is we depose him. What does that mean? Yeah. Hell, most of our people listen to me already. Do I have to kill him in the face? Sometimes, you gotta do what's best for someone, even if they think you're wrong, even if it's painful. When we're in Stellar Bay, they'll come around. Take Stellar Bay, lick our wounds, 
Eventually, figure out how the hell we're going to spread the word to the rest of the colony. I'm going to confront him. Can I count on your support? Okay. Deep breaths. This is what's best, Sora. Time to save Monarch. Captain, you must be back with the access codes to our new ship. Graham, we need to talk. We have work to do. This isn't the time for one of our spats. What? Sora? You're running the Iconoclast into the ground, and I don't believe it'll get better after we take Stellar Bay. The troops take orders from me already, and you've... You've brought me as far as you can down the Eternal Path. It's time to step down. The troops? Listen to you. This isn't an army. They aren't soldiers. They're believers. Followers. They pick up a gun because you tell them to, not because they want to. And you, Captain, after all you've done for me, for us, you throw behind this mutinous blasphemer? I built this movement from the ground up. I've brought freedom to Monarch, and all these years later, we're still free. I joined because I believed that you were in it for the Iconoclasts. That you wanted nothing more than to bring freedom to Halcyon. That you were selfless. But... I know the truth now, Graham. I know what happened in Amber Heights. You didn't start this movement because you wanted to save us. You wanted to save yourself. No. I've spent years atoning for my sins. I've studied, meditated, taught. I built the Iconoclasts so that any man could cast away his past for a fresh start. That's your answer, Graham? You needed a fresh start? After all those innocent lives? I'm sorry. I believed in you once. I did. But it's over. Stand down. I won't. What happened back then was a mistake, and the colony has moved on. This is my movement. These are my people. If you want to lead them, you'll have to kill me. Please, don't make me do this, Graham. If this is where my path ends, I accept it. But as long as I draw breath, I will not abandon them. So be it. Heads up! Whoa, why are you aiming for me? Holy shit, that looks like a perfect death pose. There's his arm. I'm gonna loot your arm. He died literally about as gracefully as anybody could in this game. Well, Captain, here we are. Killed a lot of people in the name of the Iconoclasts, and it never feels right. But this time, it's especially wrong. You've got the... Void, help me. I'll never remember what that thing is called. The device from the ship. Do you have it? I've thought about it, but I think we're too far gone. Pulling Carlotta's support was crossing a line. Yeah, well, we'll die try. Fuck. I sound like Graham. Throwing lives at a problem. I've lost a hell of a lot to this fight. Graham would never agree to this, but I'm starting to realize how often he led us astray. All right. 
If he's willing to talk, I'll give him a chance. Well then, I've got to prepare a few just-in-case measures. But when you're ready, let's meet at the old OSI church outside Stellar Bay. All right, cool. Alright, and now we oversee the uh, the thingy ma bobber. Thingy ma titty. I don't think I'll ever say that again and have a use for it. I'm so happy I have a dodge forward now. I never thought about that. My build is a, a close quarters build. Alright, and before I go in here, I'm gonna take a drink. How nice is this? Alright, um, let me do. Body. There you go. Mind attribute. Hey, thanks for coming. I wish I'd had more time to prepare a proper analysis on the costs and benefits of your proposed union, but uh, I suppose we'll have to improvise. Gotta admit. I really thought I was walking into a trap here. I'm ready. If anybody can get these two shaking hands, it's you, boss. Sanja, Stellar Bay's got food and walls. And my people need both. If you'll have us, we're willing to share the space. Do you have any idea what that would cost? Why, drawing up the budget alone is going to take weeks. Not good enough. I need to move a fair amount of my people into the city. We need shelter, Captain. Suppose some of our healthier folk could offer aid. Some of us need to stay in the city proper, though. Captain, this might really work. Truly? A compromise? I'm not sure I'd ever have heard as much from Graham. Graham was a murderous fiend. And I'd be shocked if you didn't already know that. This feels like one of those times when everyone at headquarters but me is laughing at something, but you two aren't laughing. Amber Heights, you hallhead. Ten years ago, Graham had all those people killed. What? That's not possible. Even for him, that's going too far. But that means... I had no idea, I swear. Look, we were both fed up with corporate leadership, but I, I never guessed he'd do something like that. Mr. Nandi says he don't know a thing. I say we take his word for it. You can't take bureaucrats at their word. You back someone into a corner like this, and they'll say anything to get out of it. I... Okay, okay. You're right. Sorry. It'll take me a while to get over losing Graham. You know, I felt the same way years ago, when he first left. There was something 
magnetic about him that lets you ignore the things you didn't want to see. But surely you know what that's like. Yeah, I... I do. Okay, if you're willing to house and supply some of us, I'll have our more capable soldiers help out. As am I. Oh, I can feel my blood pressure lowering already. Thanks for coming out, Sanja. I, uh, guess I'll see you at Stellar Bay. Never doubted you for a minute, boss. Heck yeah, I know what I'm doing. I've done this before. And see, they're friends. And I got the soft speaker. And I got the MSI Elite Armor. MSI Elite Helmet. It's the soft speaker, see? Yep, it's a weapon. If you help the MSI, you get the good word. Gun. If you'll excuse me. Alright, well, this is a... Uh, I'm gonna check back... Here. And... Yeah, I'm gonna go back to Stellar Bay, and I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss any weapons or anything, because... I think we're done with Monarch. We are actually done. We have all science weapons, we have... All the weapons... That we have uncovered, nice hat... Anesthesia kit, wrap the don't... The only thing we are missing is... Clive's Cleaver. And if we go to Stellar Bay... We have errors unseen. The MSI Saltuna Sorer. So we're missing a gun. So I need to talk to Sanjar again. You really lived your whole life in Edgewater? Yeah, until the captain picked me up. I was the town mechanic. Had my own little garage and everything. Don't know how you did it. If I had to spend every day working on the board's machinery, I would have gone spare. I don't think I belong. I must thank you for your excellent recommendation regarding Zora. She's most capable. Anyway, what can I do for you? Quite well, as a matter of fact. Zora is proving most capable. You should see the way she pounds the table and gets straight to the point. It makes for some rather exhilarating meetings. I know I had my concerns initially, but your instincts were right. Zora and her compatriots have become valuable and productive members of our community. And since we're back in the board's good graces, we've got real growth prospects to look forward to. What can I do for you? Speaking of, where is Zora? I don't think I need to check back in a few days. I think... I have gotten everything that I could. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? No. <laughs> well, spit and sulfur. Mr. Sanjar keeps me posted at this landing pad, so I don't hardly know anything about what goes on in town. So go tell Mr. Sanjar to kick rocks. Life's too short for landing pad duty. But I like this job. It's the best way to see who's coming and going from Stellar Bay. Which means I get to do my favorite part. Okay. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even going to give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, Maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tossball poster coming in on the next sublight shipment. 
signed by the black hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Thanks a bunch. Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. Sure. Hey, Felix, you like riddles? Oh, the data on that cartridge was even more damning than I could have hoped. And to have something on UDL of all the corporations. You've given us quite the advantage. Anyway, what can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? How is it? Thanks again for setting me up with Sebastian. Is there anything else I can help you with? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Well, if you're that friendly about it, then you definitely aren't one of Catherine's sublight toughs. My mistake. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. I can't, I keep, can't working keep working double, double shifts double. either. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grim his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. No. I paid Sublight for it. So, it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grim may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. Sure can. If you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. Damn right he will. That'll be the last I see of him for a while. Take the poster then, and if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. I'm gonna open every single damn door in this entire city, just so I can find the poster. Or, you know, find my way through, I guess. That's a better word for it. Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days. Wait. Mr. Holcomb? Like, Parvati Holcomb? 
Yeah, huh? I'm confusion. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Oh. In that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick, and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? Poor fella. I hope he's okay. We should hurry, Captain. Yeah, I know, and I'll tell you why. Maybe. Oh, it's saying it's not the best. Yep, I just learned that the the race says it's not the best over and over again. For now. I wonder what happens if I try to tame a scrap mechanical. Oh, it just doesn't attack. Sneak attack, bitch! I need to upgrade the damage on this gun. Nothing personal, I swear. Yep, I know exactly where we are. And I'm not going to say anything, but I don't think we're going to see Braxton for a bit. If anybody knows what episode 2 of the first season of Telltale the Walking Dead looks like, yeah, that's what we're about to go into. That's that's just a little Easter egg, I guess. You could, not even an Easter egg, it's just it, what it's remind me of. It's what it reminds me of. Oh shit, that was... I don't even know what that was about. A visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in. Come in. We're armed the teeth? What's he gonna do? Kill us with generosity? That's the spirit. Now come in. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm afraid we don't get many visitors out here. The raptodons and marauders scare off all but the boldest. And if you've braved them, you must be exhausted. Why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure I would remember something like that. Now, quit fretting yourself about that. Make yourself at home. Dinner's almost ready. I think I just lost my appetite. Yeah, me too. Oh, hello there. You come for... for, uh, dinner? Sorry, I'm not real good with, uh, names. 
It just gets hard to remember things. I recall moments, feelings, but the details slip. I felt like that after my dad passed. Walked around in a haze for weeks. I'm sorry you're feeling that way too. Other times it's like there's fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh? What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? The Eternal does not desire that we huddle and hide, crowded in by walls. We all share the spark of the Divine, and we were made to spread it across the stars. Out here, we are free. And even apart from society, the universe provides for us, as your being here proves. That they do. Though it's up to us to make the most of those opportunities, wouldn't you say? Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Do you have a unibrow or am I just looking at you weird? You don't have a unibrow. You have a fucking unibrow. Felix doesn't even have a unibrow. What the fuck? Oh, hi there. Did you come to bring us more of those rocket candies? That's wonderful. There was this other man who used to bring them. Not anymore, though. I don't know. I'm not really supposed to talk to strangers. He said they were making us sick. Mom and Papa got real mad at him for that. They went to have a talk with him. Afterwards, they said he wasn't coming back again. Mama and Papa said he came from the city. When we got sick one time, he brought those candies to make us well again. And they worked. Now we feel better than ever. Mama says they're a gift from the Eternal. Okay, maybe I'll see you at dinner. That was real nice of her. Inviting us to dinner like that. No. Hey, what are you doing in my room? Liar. You're trying to steal the last of my rocket candies, aren't you? You even have rocket candies in here? Definitely gonna have nightmares about this. I'm gonna be sick. That's what I was missing. Supper time. Okay, now we have everything from Monarch. Oh, Lizzie's gone. But what's this? You're tracking blood into the kitchen. Oh dear. You've been nosy, haven't you?
quickly, my dear. He's getting agitated. We can't let the meat spoil. Don't worry. We'll make this quick. Oh, will you now? Fuck you. Fuck you. Crossing somebody off never felt so damn good. <laughs> Lizzie's not even meat anymore. Well, I'm fast as fuck now. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Gosh, this old girl's in a rough way. Even old Bess in Edgewater was in better shape than this. Hey, you want to try running a cannery with obsolete machinery? You be my guest. Um, sorry, ma'am. I wasn't trying to be rude. It's just your flanging apparatus isn't making a strong flange, so your sealer isn't sealing right, and... Oh. I see what you're saying. Huh. I'll have to try that. Anyway, what do you folks need? That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on Catherine herself. Still, it's good to know what happened to him. And that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? Well, now we can go back to my ship. I hear those rich people in the